CID arrests Rishad Badiuddin. 178 billion rupees allocated to provide loans for businesses affected due to COVID-19. Jailer arrested for trafficking heroin in Putlam. Shooting in Pitigala, one person injured. Very good afternoon to you. You're watching Lunch Prime Time News. I'm Satrang Haparach. Let's take a look at those stories in detail now. Former Minister Rishad Badudin, who was arrested, is now in the custody of the Criminal Investigations Department. Former Minister Rishad Badudin was arrested by the CID this morning. Our correspondent stated at a private apartment complex in the Ebenezer area in Dehivala. <laughs> Former Minister Rishad Badiuddin, who is currently being held at the Criminal Investigations Department, is expected to be produced to court soon. He has been charged under the misappropriation of public funds and Public Property Act. It has been reported that he transported displaced people from Putlam to Mena in order to cast votes using state funds. Chief Opposition Whip of Parliament, MP Lakshman Kiriala, has addressed a letter to the Speaker requesting the debate on the 20th Amendment to the Constitution be postponed. He pointed out that social distancing and other health guidelines have to be followed according to the Gazette issued by the government last week. Thus, he has pointed out the seating allocations of MPs in Parliament are in violation of the Gazetted rules. Furthermore, he adds it is a violation of regulations to convene Parliament at a time where meetings have been restricted. He further pointed out that it does not set a virtuous example for the country if the legislature of the country does not abide by the laws of the land. The total number of COVID-19 cases in the country rose to 5,538. 61 COVID-19 cases linked to the Minuangura cluster were reported yesterday. According to the Government Information Department, the Minuangura cluster has increased to 2,075. The department further said that two returnees from Japan who were in quarantine also tested positive for the virus. The number of patients being treated for the virus currently stands at 2,122. Eight patients were discharged yesterday, bringing the total number of COVID-19 recoveries in the country to 3,402. Acting Deputy Director General of Health Services Specialist Dr. Hemant Herat states, arrangements were made to allow an A-level student in Gampa who contracted COVID-19 to continue sitting for the exam. It was confirmed yesterday that a student sitting for the advanced level examination at a school in Gampaha had contracted the virus. The student has been admitted to the IDH and is sitting for exam while receiving treatment. The students who sat for the exam in eight classrooms of Hall 5 at the school where the infected student sat for her exam have been relocated to a newly established examination center. <laughs> As of now, students have sat for the exam abiding by the respective health guidelines. We request the children to come and sit for the exam without any fear. They will be tested after the exam. Right now, they are in the mindset of writing the exam. The new cluster was identified just before the A-level examination commenced. So we put a plan in place to face any complications. We expected some of these students to contract the virus. Therefore, we decided to test students from time to time. We established special quarantine exam centers so infected students can sit for the exam. So there are no hindrances for those students to sit for the exam.
A student who is sitting for the GCE advanced level examination at a leading school in Gampa was infected with COVID-19 yesterday. Another student in Kegol was reported to have been infected by the virus. However, she had not contracted the virus. The virus is still contained within the close contacts. This week is extremely important. We request the people of Sri Lanka to be aware. We are fighting with a virus that we still have not completely understood. Therefore, whenever you are stepping out of your house, Make sure you follow the relevant health guidelines. A much more complex situation has arisen, different to what persisted during the first wave. A major problem we have is that around 2,100 active COVID-19 patients have been admitted to hospitals. The majority of these patients are asymptomatic or show minor symptoms. At this moment, we should focus on the more serious patients. For this, we suggest the patients be divided into three main groups. The first should be the patients who are asymptomatic. These patients sometimes recover without even taking a pill of paracetamol. The second group show minor symptoms, such as slight cough. The third group should include serious patients with respiratory complications. We have to provide three stages of health services for these three groups based on the health complications they suffer from. We don't have to provide them with the same level of treatment. Through this system, we would be able to match the capacities of each hospital in handling the patients. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka announced that 178 billion rupees has been approved for 61,907 loan applications submitted by businesses affected by COVID-19. These loans will be granted to 45,582 beneficiaries. According to the Central Bank, the beneficiaries of these loan schemes are business ventures, including those who are self-employed and sole proprietorships affected by COVID-19. CBSL further stated that after considering the requests made by the affected businesses, a decision was reached to accept applications without considering the initial limit of 150 billion rupees. Accordingly, relief will be provided under this loan scheme for all applications submitted by the affected businesses. The central bank noted the first phase of the loan scheme was launched on the 1st of April 2020 and the second and third phases came into effect from the 1st of July in 2020. These loans carry an annual interest rate of 4%. 37 people were arrested during the last 24 hours for violating quarantine curfew in the Gampaha district. According to police media spokesperson DIG Ajit Rohana, seven vehicles were also taken into police custody during the period. A total of 302 people have been arrested for violating quarantine curfew in Gampaha and 37 vehicles have been taken into police custody. The police spokesperson said that the curfew imposed in 19 police jurisdictions in the Gampaha district is still in effect. A jailer involved in trafficking heroin has been arrested in the Senapudiripu area in Putlam. The operation was carried out by a group of officers attached to the National Narcotics Bureau. 40 grams and 870 milligrams of heroin were found in the possession of the 40-year-old suspect. An official from the prison's department said that the arrested jailer attached to the Kaluthar prison had previously been suspended from the police. One person sustained injuries following a shooting in Godamune in Pitigala. According to the police, the shooting had taken place during a dispute between two people last night. The victim, a 45-year-old resident of Godamune, is currently receiving treatment at the Karapitiya Hospital. The suspect was also injured. The Alpitiya police stated that investigations regarding the incident are underway. A scheme of stealing cattle has been reported from Bobitia, Varakapula. Area residents of Bobitia, Varakapula in Kegal had apprised the divisional secretary of the area regarding a herd of cattle roaming free in the area by laying waste to many farmlands, following which a farmer in Rajangane had been granted permission by the divisional secretary to take ownership of the herd. The herd had been given to the farmer to be reared. However, villagers pointed out only 15 cows remain out of a herd which once included 64 cows. Villagers allege a person has been smuggling cows from the Bopitir, Batuana and Palamure areas for a number of days. According to the Varakapula Divisional Secretary, although the first individual was given permission to rear cows, a second person was not being allowed to take the cattle. The villagers feel that a cattle racket is taking place in the area and are requesting for a formal investigation.
News First, Sri Lanka's most trusted news brand, keeps you informed wherever you are. All you need to do is follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. News First, your life, our news. Well, that's all the news we have for you this afternoon. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.